three, two, one. In continuing this video series, a very special episode. As you can see, this, I may have mentioned, was my General Electric tape recorder. I got Christmas of 85, model 3-5015D. It's my first tape recorder. In 1988, I um, said to my mom, and I, sa I said this because one of my classmates who lived a couple streets up from me got a Panasonic um, shoebox style like this tape recorder with a tape counter, and I wanted a new tape recorder. Now, and one of the reasons why, all my um, tape recorders or tape players at the time did not have a tape counter. And while it is very basic, you know, mechanical, three-digit tape counter, I was obsessed with it. I really wanted a tape recorder for tape counter. And when looking in the service merchandise catalog, I, there was that tape recorder that kid had. But then I saw this. This Sony right here. Model TCM 818. It was for about 19 or 20 dollars in service merchandise, which would be about 40 to 45 dollars in today's money. Um, even though it's getting towards the 90s, and I'm more a fan of really squared off designs like this, it's still not as bad looking as like mid 90s and later, where everything got real curvy and, in my opinion, butt ugly. Yeah, it's still rather conservative with all that, and it's unique. I say unique because look at it. It's um, look at the layout of it. Uh, the speaker on it is not that large. It's a little small speaker. The biggest thing right here, that tape counter. If I can get the light not to glare or shine off of it, because it is highly detailed and polished right now. And I'll just go a quick overview of this has your standard condenser microphone built in. The three jacks on the front. And you have the earphone. I like how they have the ear in there for earphone. Microphone and remote. Volume control. This does not have a built-in handle, but these little um, pieces right here, I believe you have, there is a carrying strap for this. I don't recall that. I did get it back with the original power cord, and this is the bottom. The battery compartment opens like that. It's connected on a living hinge. Okay. Again, this is what an entry-level tape recorder got you in 1988. Um, this tape recorder. It is a Sony. It's made in Malaysia. Again, entry level. The cassette mechanism is not a Sony. Um, it is, I don't know who the OEM is, but you'll find this cassette mechanism under many various brands. You know those General Electric alarm clocks we have, and many other collectors have. It's a very common model with the built in. Uh, cassette deck it shares the same mechanism and I mean disengage auto stop by pressing pause listen hear how that sounds and another big giveaway is the little plus sign looking thing on the top of the spindles there yeah it's the same mechanism they use in numerous things my that 1992 sound design stereo that I destroyed and no offense to anybody but it was a piece of junk. <laughs> um, and let me let me just insert that clip for you.
1992 sound design. Uh, you were a cheap stereo bought from service merchandise for $40 back in the day. May you rest in pieces. Now, like I said, don't be upset about that. That one was made in China and a terrible performer. Again, you, you, once you get into the 90s, things just really plummeted like for things like this. And this leads up into the video after this. But that said, this mechanism here is used under many makes. In fact, I was at the thrift store and there was this generic... It was actually a BSR branded stereo from the 90s with a record player and a CD player in it. It was one of those all-in-one things that looked like a component system. And it, um, it had two cassette decks on it. One had this identical mechanism. The other one had a different mechanism that was auto reverse. I don't know who makes it, but it basically this is sourced from one place and many manufacturers used it in their own. I do like it because it is rather reliable. Um, it does have full automatic stop. It's based off of the take up reel. So that's why, and I notice if you hit pause and do it, it won't kick out. But if you remove this, it doesn't sense a tape, it stops. Again, it's all based on that take up reel there. But it's very reliable and no complaints there. Okay. So it's 1988. I get this tape recorder. And next thing you know, after I got this one, I believe this one got thrown out by my mom. Because that's typically what happened. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go there. Anyhow, this tape recorder here. Original power cord. It is a very nice unit. And this is... Around the time I had my obsession with Sony products. Because I also have, it's not going to be featured now, but later on, a very special episode involving a very special Sony boombox. I'll get into that later. My obsession with Sony products during this time frame was because of the beta we had. This was my VCR um, that's been in my room since 1989 given to me in 1987 didn't get it in until we moved it's not plugged in right now because up until two years ago the caps are finally starting to go in it and it's just doing weird things I gotta recap the thing which is sad because I missed its 30th anniversary last year so it'll come later but this is because of this became my obsession of getting a Sony tape recorder that's why there's no video on this unit right now. This beta here is because I gotta recap the thing. You know, it's been plugged in for about 25 years of its 32 year life almost. You know, that's gonna happen. Before I demonstrate this unit, this is another odd thing. I found this at the same time I got this off eBay recently. Instead of finding the owner's manual, I found the service manual for it. Here are some of the tech specs. As you can see, it's really just ideal for voice recording. Yeah, that frequency response isn't that good. It's, it's, it's a DC bias permanent magnet erase unit. But again, here's, here's the thing. Even though this was a cheap, low-end unit, it still works beautifully. And it's going to be 30 years old in another year or so. Um, that's just it. Yeah, we. by the time things were just getting cheap, but you still had a well-made unit. This Sony is well-made, even though it had a shared mechanism. You know, not even their own cassette mechanism. But... 90s came around, that's when things really started going downhill for stuff. Anything. And I'll, I'll get into all this in a minute, but anyhow, we'll just flip through this real quick. Even has exploded view for all the parts. Even that shows a vacuum tube voltmeter here. Nice.
even has all the component lists on here and apparently an updated thing from July 29th 1991 anyhow let's demonstrate this unit using the tape I made in my previous video tape counter and here we go she did it to me. I slept and fell in love I'm in love As you can see, it is a rather decent performer, not very loud. Again, it's more of a personal like machine for more for dictation or something like that. So, I mean, the the speaker's output's only 400 milliwatts. That's it. So again, good entry level unit. We'll demonstrate rewind and automatic stop in rewind. Beautiful. All right, now let's. Uh, I'm gonna fast forward to the end of that song. And we'll demonstrate this unit. Now, before I continue, one port, a couple important things. I did have us a part to service it. Uh, I don't know if it has the original belts. Uh, it has been. See, when I got it, it was taken apart before. And let me insert the picture here. As you can see, this um, the motor for it is dated from 2008. This that is a date code on there. And so which means this thing's been recently serviced in the last eight years. And the belts may have been replaced, but I just clean up some rubber cleaner and rejuvenator. That said, these are easily repaired and they will run forever. There's never, not really any problems with them. So it is a well-made unit. So yeah, there you go. And the other thing I did was, you know, even the tape speed was dead on. So whoever did it, did it right. I also did uh, tape head azimuth alignment. Again, those are all very important to do, especially when you play a tape across different units. Because, like example, that um, from the previous video, that bell and howl, it did not sound that good. And all it was is the tape head azimuth needed some tweaking, and now it gets really good treble response. Yeah, it's very important to do all this stuff before you put these back into use. And you'll be amazed. I, I, I love it. You know, sounds fantastic. So we'll do some record tests here. It is Sunday, November 20th, 2016 at 3.36 a.m. Demonstrating the Sony Cassette Quarter TCM818 using the built-in condenser microphone. Sunday, November 20th, 2016, at 3.36 a.m., demonstrating the Sony Cassette Quarter TCM-818 using the built-in condenser microphone. As you can hear, yeah, you know, it's okay. It's good for dictation. Just, um, that's what I remember, you know, just how the, it was designed, you know. And this is a test using the sound design external microphone like I did back in the day on this tape recorder. Also notice the background noise there. That's due to DC bias. Again, not ideal for music recordings. And again, the DC bias is just a form of cost cutting. Less components at the trade-off of being having background noise added to the tape. You know, and that's unfortunate. Most 90s, low-end, all-in-ones, you name it, all had DC bias, which made cassettes look like meh compared to CDs, which is not the case at all. I mean, trust me, cassettes are far better than CDs, especially on, uh, in, you know, for sound reproduction. And I don't, I don't want to get into any arguments here. I'm just saying I know all the tech specs, but listening to it, no, these will do a much better job. But again, low-end units, not so much. 
Now I am making a direct connection for music off YouTube into this tape recorder. All right, it's all queued up and it actually sounds pretty good for a direct recording. I've never did that back in the day, have a direct music source hooked into it. So it sounds pretty good actually. And that concludes this demonstration of this Sony TCM-818 cassette, as Sony says, cassette quarter from 1988. And there'll be one last new video in this series of tape recorders that makes it very special. So please stay tuned. Oh, and one last thing I forgot to mention. Um, had to retake this. Do a retake on this, sorry. What happened to this tape recorder? In 1996, when we moved, as uh, during that time, I went through that weird phase, and unfortunately, I threw it out. And I didn't know I'd want to get it back, but it turns out I really did miss it. I did a lot of memories with it. I don't have very many um, cassettes left that I recorded on this unit back then. I think this may be the only surviving tape. Uh, and it's not solely recorded on this unit. It was like a mixtape between my dad's Panasonic um, rack stereo system from 1988 and that piece of junk sound design boombox. Uh, but this part I'm going to play for you right here was recorded on this same model unit and um, it was me recording this using the built-in condenser mic off the TV vinyl on to cassette. And this right here is interesting. This is this tape recorder recording that Panasonic playing out using the microphone out speaker into this. If you watch the tape Oh, sorry, if you watched the video where I first demonstrated it, it was this, it's the same reel I was playing. This tape right here was early 1996 I did this. If you're wondering, um... Oh, let me see. Let me see. This tape right here, the Mario Brothers thing, I have the I still have the same VHS tapes that came from. And it was recorded off TV in 1993. Uh, but this audio cassette where I recorded it playing was from, I want to say, late 95. This part here I know was like early 96, like March 96, I did this. 
And if you're wondering what happened to this tape recorder, nothing was wrong with it. It just in 96 when we moved again, I just got rid of it. Again, I went through that phase and I did some stupid stuff. Got it back now. Turns out, I did miss it. Out of curiosity, let's see what's on the back of this in this same spot. I think I dubbed with that sound design stereo piece of junk. That thing had the worst automatic. No, I lied. The GPXs I had had the worst, but this had one of the worst automatic level control systems at sound design. Yeah, yeah, I think Born to be Wild happens after this. This is the live thing. Yep. <laughs> little in joke here. I did something else with this exact recording in 98. August 29th, 1998 at August 30th, I, I, oh. 1998 at 12.13 a.m. And yes, that is me. That was me when I was 16. And um, that I, I know exactly what's going on here. This microphone. That's what that jump jump was. I was that was recording that using that Tandy CCR eighty one cassette recorder, which goes with that TRS eighty Model three computer from nineteen eighty. Uh, I did feature that tape recorder on my channel um, like nine years ago. Jeez. Um, but yeah, that's that's how this was recorded. AC bias all the way. This is my last and final day of summer. Sure, it's only 13 minutes into Sunday, but what you gonna do? Okay, now I'm gonna highlight a couple of things that are going on right now. Okay, now the green fan, I have got... Okay, 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 this is getting good. Okay, the, the green fan is the wizard. The 1955 wizard roll air. I rest we restored in uh, uh, early 2013. That rollabout fan, this is what I'm referring to. Uh, I just realized this today. I'm going to have to rewire the switches because... The old wire is like it's pulling on it and eventually if it from 60 cycle vibrations and the earth's movement it's going to come loose if it comes loose the wire's going to slip off the wire slips off you're going to see sparks flying it's a fire hazard i'm going to change that put a longer cord on ground it and i, I was doing some weird things and i don't, yeah, I don't I'm gonna know put crimps on t tape at this time so it's safer yeah i gotta I, chain the cords from the tech school's monday august basically 31st, the uh, cord on it at the time um, going on. It had another with, um, one of the cords had an open in it. 25 inch console wires, I should say. Two TV and a 19 inch solid state TV by Sears. Oh, that's the original uh, collection. Uh, yes. All three need demagnetized, and what am I talking all about? All three need adjusted. The bottom one, I need to readjust the gun bias, CRT drive, brightness limiter, uh, PCC color adjustment. I don't even know what that is. And yeah, other oddball things. Really, it's not that much. And tube TV is fine, but I'm gonna look into it because it's like adjusted weirdly. And I know what I'm gonna do right now. Hang on. On my frequency control module. This is the original collection here. On my frequency I'm, range is way off. I'm gonna pause this. I, I'm totally going off topic here. This is taken in 1998. Okay. This TV here is very special to me, and I really am trying to get that back. All that was wrong was the picture tube was very weak. I probably could have revived it 
if I had a CRT, um, you know, like a, like the Sencor I got now, and at the time I just didn't have the resources or the know how to do it. The tube TV I'm referring to was an identical Warwick Electronic Sears from 1975, March 75. The bottom was a 1975 Sears Warwick. The thing is, okay, the, this one here, the Sears on the bottom was my grandfather's. This one on the right I'll get to in a minute. This top one I got from my high school AV room. It didn't belong to the school, and I got it. It was a hybrid tube Sears color TV, and I... All that was wrong with that one now that I know is just the loose tube socket. I, could, I want that TV back. I'm never going to find that one again. And I got light glare here. I'm trying my best. This guy here is the uh, 1982 Sears by Sanyo. That was also my grandfather's, and I wish I could get that back. Around 2000, the picture just like, the picture was just blank. And, you know, so obviously no, I think no high voltage, really. Nowadays, I could have fixed it some way or another, but but as you can see, there's the same um, bedroom furniture <laughs> as you can see right here. Nothing. Um, this is how I am. I like to keep everything. See, see, there's, see, there's a date on there. Unpause this. I have to look into why it gets wavy, and if I get TV repair manuals, then I got the Sears uh, solid state TV. That TV's perfect, but I gotta remember the glue. The two tabs missing on the back of the cabinet background. That was very common of those Sears right there. I'm the talking gun about bias. Yeah, gun bias, CRT drive, screen, and bright level adjustment. Because I messed with them. Big mistake. I can get it working right, but it's like not good enough, you know. That's why there's a setup line. But I think I might know how. But the thing is, I didn't know what the jumper. It didn't indicate that. Now I know exactly what to look for. UHF tuning dial. Get the setup line in there. And a quick adjustment in like less than a few minutes, and I'm done. Okay. Now, right now, I'm cleaning up my room. Okay. Current things. I were just recently acquired. I taped off the big screen TV using the video and. The signal out, audio video input jacks, output jacks, the Panasonic TV up to the Emerson. I, re re I recorded one I haven't seen in years. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and backstory and other things of this Sony cassette quarter model TCM 818 from 1988. Thanks for watching.